The next one is ghiba, backbiting. As an ummah, we have to stop doing this. We have to stop backbiting. Each individual has to make a commitment. And when you hear people backbiting, you have to tell them, I don't want to hear this. I can't hear this. What is backbiting? There are two definitions. The prophetic definition is obviously the best, but there's an extended fiqhi definition, which is important also. The prophetic definition is, ذِكْرُكَ أَخَاكَ بِمَا لَوْ سَمِعَهُ لَكَرِهَا it is to mention your brother, had he heard you saying it, he would dislike it. That is the prophetic definition. The, the faqih's definition is an extension of that which says that it is to make mention of your brother in a distasteful way in which there's no need. In other words, sometimes it's necessary to say things about your brother uh, for, for reasons and the ulama, they give uh, reasons for it. Uh, and, and they're this, talallam, which is if somebody's an oppressor, it's permissible to tell somebody, help me, he's an oppressor, like to go to the judge and say, this man stole my property. He wouldn't like to hear that, but it's permissible in that position. Wasta'in, to seek help, help me, this here's an oppressor here, or help come, somebody's stealing, something like that. Or a stifti, to ask a fatwa. So if you go to a faqih and say, uh, my husband does this, this, and this. Like Hind, the, the wife of Abu Sufyan, went to the Messenger of Allah and said, Inna Abu Sufyan rajulun shahihun. He's a miserly man. If Abu Sufyan heard that, he'd be really upset. But she was telling him because she wanted a fatwa about whether she could take his money without his permission. So it's permissible in that case. Hadir, to make, to warn people about uh, somebody. Like if you've had a transaction with somebody and he's done wrong things, and somebody comes to you and says, Yeah, he, you used to be in business with that person. I was thinking about going in business. What do you say? And you say, Don't go in business with him. I had a bad experience. That is not ghibah, that's nasiha. The ulama make a condition, and that is that you don't add anything onto it that's not necessary. So you don't say, And by the way, he beats his wife, and by the way, he drinks, and by the way, right? You just leave it to what he needs to know about it, right? Seriously, and it's a temptation. Because if somebody did something wrong to you, and this is a proof of what Sidi Muhammad Sharif was saying in his talk. It's a proof of that. That you only tell people what they need to know. Look at Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu. When he divorced his wife, one man came to him and said, why did you divorce your wife? And he said, I don't want to make ghibah. Because obviously there was something that was displeasurable. And then he said, uh, he asked him, uh, you know, do you, well, do you think I should marry her? Like he asked him, Something like that. And he said, uh, he, no, he asked him what, what her mu'ashara was like. And he said, uh, I'm no longer married to her, so I have no right to tell you anything about her personal life. And that, that's taqwa. That is simple as that. How many people now will spend the rest of their lives complaining about their divorced wife or husband? To everybody that will give them an ear. 20 years I put up with that man. I used to bring him tea, and he'd say, it's not hot enough. <laughs> I used to make him food, and he'd say, where'd you learn how to cook? Really, how many? There's a lot of people like that. And then there's men like that. I, that woman, all she did was scream at me. Ten years I put up with that. Finally, I got rid of her. Right? Why are you telling people that? She's a Muslim. Really, we have to shut up. This taqwa, this is it. You know, this is what this deen's about. It's not, it's not a game because yawm al is suddenly we're all going to say, Ya wailana! Ya hasrata! Well, that's what people are going to say. Ma farrattu fi jambi la. Oh, I didn't do the rights of Allah. Why didn't I do it? Ya laytini lam attakhid fulana khalila. Oh, I wish I didn't spend time with this shaitan. This is what people are going to say. These are real expressions in the Quran that people will say. Irji'ni, a'mal salih, and let me go back, I'll do good. We don't want to be those people. We want to be people, man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allahu liqa'ahu. And the one who loves to meet Allah is working for that day. That's the proof. It's not, oh yes, I want to die and meet Allah. I can't wait. The, many of the Sahaba were afraid because they, weren't, they didn't feel prepared yet. And that's why the Messenger of Allah said, don't desire death. Because either you're a bad person and you still have time to make tawbah and do some good things before you die, or you're a good person and you want to increase in your goodness. Allahu Akbar. وَجْعَلَ الْحَيَاةَ زِيَادَةً لِي فِي كُلِّ خَيْرٍ In Sahih Muslim. 
Make my life increase in every good. 